Welcome to What If Tanjiro Was Born a Demon King Part 4, last time we left of with the end of the swordsmith village arc. One week later for Muijio to recover from his injuries, an emergency pillar meeting was held at the Yubaya Shaiki estate with all the Hashira present. A main Yubaya Shaiki was there in her husband's stead, as his illness has rendered him of his ability to attend. They discuss Nezuko and the strange marks that appeared on Muijio that day and Amain explains what they are. These are marks that many of the first swordsmen who were only one step away from beating Muzan had. This information had been hidden due to the fact that many people brooded over not having the marks. Over time, the information had become unclear, but one thing that was passed on indefinitely was that whoever had the mark would start spreading it to others who fit the qualifications. The first one among this generation to have it was Tanjiro, but when they first saw it, they assumed they were a side effect of him being a demon progenitor, or a symbol of being one of his demons considering his siblings also had some form of markings however since he had them as long as he could remember, he had a hard time putting how it felt into words. Amain then asks for Muijio to help. With Muijio having an idea of what qualifications were fulfilled for to make the mark appear. Muijio explains that he was consumed by his anger and lost complete control of his emotions. He says that he thinks that his heart rate exceeded 200 beat per minute and his body temperature went over 39 degrees Celsius. Muijio thinks that those who do not have the mark appear even though they do have the qualifications do not get the mark because they will die, but those whose bodies can withstand these extreme circumstances will have a mark appear and enhance their ability to fight. Muijio says that when Shinobu was treating his wounds, he was reported to have had a fever. It was then established that they would have mark training and that anyone who had gotten the mark would have to participate. Amain then leaves and the pillars have a discussion about the training. After the discussion is over, Higanzuka arrives at the Demon Sun Mansion to deliver Tanjiro his swords. The swordsmith is huffing and puffing into his mask to the point there is visible sweat coming off of the mask. Higanzuka gives Tanjiro his swords and sits down before urging Tanjiro to unsheathe the first blade. Please take mind that he is doing all of this passive aggressively. Tanjiro is in awe by the blade. Higanzuka says that it is made from high quality steel and must have been used previously by a very strong swordsman. The blade has the character for destruction engraved into it, just like his original blade. Higanzuka also explains that this blade was probably made before the demon slayer hierarchy was established and was why many of the pillars have characters, meaning destroy all evil demons, on them. Tanjiro then says that he did not remember seeing those words on the sword when he had used it. Higanzuka then urges Tanjiro to unsheathe the second sword to reveal a sword nearly identical to his original sword, having a crimson red blade, with slightly darker red fangs running across it on one side and a red flame pattern on the other, at the bottom of the blade the kanji for destroy is inscribed into it and having a blood pattern running down the hilt of the blade, the only difference was the zuba was swapped with a red and black flame to match his change in breathing and the scabbard was also changed, now having the same pattern as on it as his blade. After talking about the beauty and craftsmanship of the blades he finally leaves after Tanjiro promises to bring him dumplings until the day he dies. At the same time, Takeo received his blade, with it being slightly different to his original blade, now having rainbow edge to it and a bismuth crystal zuba with a coating over it to make it more durable. Now that Tanjiro and the others have their blades, the Hashira training may begin, as a large group of demon slayers are seen heavily sweating as the run down a mountain pass. While overlooking the training, Tanjiro thinks that this training is only possible because after the incident at the swordsmith village, the demons have dwindled in activity, referring the time as the calm before the storm. While on break from training demon slayers, Tanjiro listens in on a tension-filled confrontation between the Shinazugawa brothers. Seinemi straightforwardly disowns Genya as his brother, and further insults his abilities as a swordsman ordering him to quit the demon slayers. Distraught by the denial and his brother's lack of empathy, Chenya further tries to apologize for his wrongdoing, while secretly being encouraged by Tanjiro who is eavesdropping, and reveals his desperation to where he acquired the ability to fight by eating demons Seinemi stops in his tracks and peers back menacingly at Chenya questioning his words about eating demons. He vanishes within the moment, causing Tanjiro to make a break towards Chenya and tackle him to the ground, safely protecting him from having his eyes gouged out by Seinemi. The two boys crash through the sliding doors into the outside garden, scaring Zenitsu along with the other demon slayers. Tanjiro questions Seinemi for trying to kill his brother but the latter corrected him stating that he will only beat Genya until he no longer has the ability to regenerate resulting in his retirement from the demon slayers. In disbelief, 
Tanjiro defended Genya stating that he was sufficient help fighting Upper Moon however didn't have enough time to show his true potential, and declares that he will protect him from his brother who disowned him. Sanemi then turned to attack Tanjiro but Tanjiro was easily able to block his punch and counter-attack. Once the one-sided brawl between Tanjiro and Sanemi started, Tanjiro requested Zenitsu to take Genya away with the latter chastising the former for involving him in the scuffle. After the fight ended in Sanemi's defeat, they were both scolded by the other Hashira for their actions, with Tanjiro being scolded yet praised for his actions, and Sanemi being mostly scolded. After a few weeks, some slayers such as Kaneo, Inosuke, Zenitsu, and Genya managed to complete all the other Hashira's training so they finally made it to Tanjiro's training which was simulated Muzan combat, with Tanjiro attempting to fight like Muzan as much as possible meaning no breathing techniques or exploding sun, only physical strength, speed, and biokinesis, an ability that both of them seemed to share, however due to the high levels of poison Muzan and Tanjiro infect opponents with a single scratch, Tameo, Yuishio and Nezuko were present to neutralize it before it causes any permanent damage. Despite their best efforts, they still couldn't beat him so they were sent to train under Takeo who was slightly stronger than 4th drug Muzan from Canon, constantly having to deflect and counter his explosive weapons and breathing techniques, forcing them to increase their reaction speeds and improve their tactical thinking. While the other slayers are sparing against Takeo, Tanjiro gives the Hashira minus his siblings, who are still training weaker demon slayers, a crash course in demon slayer marks, explaining how bearers of the mark can potentially gain access and see into the transparent world, allowing them to perceive the bodies of others as if their skin was transparent. Enabling them to track the flow of blood, breathing, muscular contractions and joint movements of the person they are looking at which can be used to predict their movements and evade their attacks with ease. Additionally, those who can access the transparent world can perceive the world in slow motion, further increasing their reaction and movement speed. He explains that while unknown to him, his father used to give him perception training as a child, telling him to seal off his other senses and turn his mind invisible, focusing exclusively on the opponent's body and movements. He then expands on that point, explaining the selfless state which requires the user to close of all of their senses and clear their mind, focusing on a particular moment so much that they reach a stage where they are completely detached from themselves, making the user's behavior become incredibly tranquil and focused, comparing it to being like fighting with a plant as it completely removes the user's fighting spirit forward slash will to fight, bloodlust, anger, hatred, malevolence, drive and animosity. Tanjiro then explains that bearers of the Demon Slayer mark can change the color of their Nishirin swords to a shining bright red color mainly through gripping it with tremendous force. Explaining how bright red Nishirin swords have the ability to generate intense heat and also hamper the regeneration of demons, some of which are on the level of the strongest upper ranks or the Demon King himself. To try force the Hashira to activate their marks, and access all the abilities he just mentioned, Tanjiro ordered all the Hashira present to charge at him with the fight ending if they manage to cut off his head, and of course this is all while Tanjiro isn't using any of his breathing styles only the transparent world. By the end of the exercise despite all the Hashira activating the mark, turning their blades bright red, and Muijio, Tamayoka, Seinemi, Abenai, Rengoku and Jiomiya entering the transparent world, Tanjiro still won the exercise, albeit after regenerating his limbs and Biokinsis tentacles a few times. For the final step of the training, Tanjiro handed out a vial of his blood and a needle to all the Hashira minus his siblings, and also giving it to a select few demon slayers with noble or pure goals, who would not mistreat the power, such as the Kamaboko squad, instructing them to inject it if they are mortally injured and want to survive, or if they are facing a foe who they know they cannot beat, explaining that there is enough blood to make the weakest of demon slayers lower moon 6 level. So who knows what would happen if a Hashira ingested it. He offered Yubaya Shaiki a vial, noticing his deteriorating health, noting that he probably has a month at best to live, but he rejected it stating that he does not fear death, and it would be wrong to bring another demon into the family, referring to Muzan. As the sun started to set, a young man with pale skin and red glowing eyes and black curly hair, wearing a white fedora along with a perfectly fitting black suit and a white tie, appeared outside the Yubaya Shaiki residence, gracefully entering the building, standing over the half-dead master of the demon slayers. Hearing the entrance of the man, Kigaya asked his wife for his description. After the basic description, Muzan mocked Yubaya Shaiki stating that despite living for over a thousand years he shows no sign of aging while on the other hand, Yubaya Shaiki is already smelling and looking like a corpse. In turn, Yubaya Shaiki ridicules Muzan in his dream stating that it won't come true and that human thoughts are indestructible. 
He recalls how the demon hunters still exist for a thousand of years and how Musen have incurred their wrath further noting that even if he dies, the hunters will not feel pain as they don't need him that much. The connection to human thought is something demons cannot understand, because they will cease to exist once Musen dies. Upon hearing this, Musen became enraged and appeared in front of Yubaya Shaiki demanding him to shut up in which Yubaya Shaiki thanked him. Suddenly there is a massive explosion destroying the Yubaya Shaiki residence and killing its residents as well as damaging Musen but he rapidly regenerated straight after. Musen senses that Kigaya has something else planned, knowing people and most likely Hashiras must be close by. He thinks back to the Oyakata's final moments, he had hidden all his anger and bloodlust without Musen ever notices anything, something he begrudgingly commends him for. As Musen tries to put his mind towards regenerating quicker, flesh seeds appear around him. Without warning, they burst into giant black bramble branches. He realizes they must be a blood demon art but is immobilized. The spikes don't harm him however and Musen believes he can simply absorb them to escape. Out of nowhere, Taimeo appears and stabs her hand through Musen's stomach. Musen is angered at her sudden appearance and asks her reason. He realizes she must have hidden herself with another blood demon art, using Yuishio's talismans. She tells Musen the drug in her fist absorbed by him turns demons back into humans. Musen claims it's impossible but she states it became possible with someone's help. Musen curses her stubbornness and makes the claim that her hatred of him is unjust. He reminds her that she alone was responsible for the deaths of her family. She tearfully responds all she wanted was to survive her disease and see her children grow up. The demon lord mentions she had eaten other people after that and states she had fun doing so, grabbing her head viciously. Tameo doesn't deny that fact and states that in order to atone for those deaths, she and Musen will die together. Tameo calls out to Tanjiro, the first to arrive at the scene. With a single swing of his sword, he decapitates Musen, assisted by Tameo keeping the demon still. Okay guys this is the end of the fourth part, if you enjoyed the video please don't forget to like and subscribe, remembering to turn on the notification button, with that being said, this is Demonic Cyan saying bye.